say welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. My name is Pinto, Pinto Bean, and I am just a little mess. Wait till you meet all my brothers and sisters. You ready to have lunch, girlfriend? <laughs> and my name is Butter Bean. I'm the twin sister to Pinto Bean. I'm Salt, uh, yes, I am Salt's baby. And I'm a good girl. You hungry? Ow! Oh, that's my nose! <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Say, my name is Bucky. <gasps> Say, hi, Bucky. I'm hungry. My sister's name is Buttons. <laughs> Bucky, your sisters are very impatient. Let's get you outside, brother. What do you think? Say hi. Say my name. My name. My name is Buttons. She's a loud. She's a loud mouth over there. You hear her? <laughs> Say, my name is Dixie. Say hi, everybody. Everybody's met beautiful Dixie. You ready to have lunch, girlfriend? Yes. You ready? Well, are you better? Say, ah, no, you can't have my earrings. This is why we don't wear pearls anymore. You creatures grab pearls. Say hi, everybody. My name is Dottie. <laughs> you hungry, Dottie? She's the baby of all the babies. She, Dottie is the baby. All right, we are ready to roll with this. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. It's the crazy Thanksgiving week here. Are you crazy yet? Not yet. Everybody though, had to run some errands and it's a little bit busy out there. It's a little bit busy, but I will tell you, I have to say this. I will tell you that everywhere that I went today, um, you know, took Gabriel to school and went by the bank and went to a few small places and it did get busier as the afternoon went on, but everybody was so nice. I didn't have any trouble today and I had so many people say, happy Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. So no matter what you're doing this week, no matter what's going on in your life, try your best, just put on the best smile you can, say a prayer and say happy Thanksgiving. Because when somebody told me today, happy Thanksgiving, my heart went boom. We're so desperate. The whole world is so desperate for real leadership and for positive vibes. And Lord knows we all need more Jesus. So just be that person, okay? I know. Even if you, you just can't hardly muster it, muster it. Be that person. So here's what I'm doing today. I just got home. It's feeding time for lunch because the babies have come down to three feedings a day. I'm going to get into all of that. But I'm in the midst of cleaning dishes. Bottles are heating up. <laughs> I'm going to can that applesauce that I made late last night. Here's the thing. If you can something and or you make something and it starts getting really, really late, a lot of items that you might make can absolutely be refrigerated until the next day and slowly warmed up, just like applesauce, for example. So I'm going to can that this afternoon. That's what I'm working towards. But I've got questions that have come in about my goats, my goat babies, our schedule and different things like that. I feel like I've tried to cover most of these questions and give you the answers, but I know there's a lot of people that still have the same questions, and that's okay. You might have missed my other responses, so I'm going to make a whole video about this, uh, and I'm just going to tell it like it is, and hopefully it'll help you, um, and it may inspire you to do something different than what you've done before on your farm to help you out, okay? Every scenario is different. Every farm is different. Even if you have a particular person and farm that does a lot of the same thing, like, you know, maybe they raise goats like I do, okay? Again, let me stress to you, not every scenario, every season is going to be the same. It's just like anything else. You have to be prepared as possible and go with the flow. Let's answer your questions. Okay, so I'm going to talk right here before I get in the midst of feeding or doing anything else so that I can answer your questions. Okay, so here's the bottom line. You know that we homestead, we have a farm, whatever. We've been doing this for a long time. I milk goats and I milk cows. We are in the process of right now raising a whole bunch of goat babies. Two weeks ago, I have multiple, multiple videos on this by now, uh, at least several in the last two weeks, showing you the birth of our goats, all the things that we've had to do, the cold weather, etc., etc. But I just want to break this down. 
I did not pull any of these goats from their mamas because I just wanted to. Can you hear them? They're hungry. I know it's heating up. They drink the bottles better if they're warmed up as opposed to ice cold or anything like that. Um, cause some, the milk's in the fridge, right? So we do this because we want to guarantee life as much as possible on our farm. I am extremely pro-life to the end of time, as far as it goes in every scenario you will ever put Patera in. So that should answer a lot of questions for you. Now, if I, in terms of my farm, if I can make a mama and baby scenario work out, be it baby chicks and chicks and broody mamas, be it a goat and a calf, be it my, not a goat, a cow and her calf, my goats and her kids, whatever the preference of course is to allow the mamas to raise the babies as much as possible. Not everybody does that, however, and that's not necessarily a bad thing if you let me continue to answer the questions. Just hear me out. Some people pull the goat babies because they have specific ones that they want to milk. They want to develop uh, milk later, like actual dairy goat. Or maybe they've got a buck that they, is just beautiful and they need a really good buck and they want him to be their prized buck. So they have chosen to take the buck or take whatever and bottle raise it because, yes, that baby will bond to you. It will be friendlier to you. It will know you. I will absolutely tell you that nine times out of ten, you can't compare the relationship from a, you know, you and the goat baby say that you're bottle feeding, it's very difficult to compare it to ones that you didn't. It takes a lot more work for them to trust you and to adapt. Can you do it? Absolutely. I'm not speaking against that. It can be done and is done often. It takes a lot of time and training. But in my years of experience, even whether I wanted to or whether I had to, I had to in every scenario just about, um, depending on the situation, um, the babies out in my field, I call them my babies, they're, you know, 200 pound babies, but you can quickly tell when I walk out in the field without you having any knowledge or any experience on a farm, I guarantee you a donut with extra Christmas sprinkles that you would be able to very quickly say, that's a, that's a bottle fed baby. That's a bottle fed baby. She had to have bottle fed that baby because they're so bonded and friendly to us. Whereas the ones that were not hand-raised, hand-fed, hand-bottled. They can tend to be more aloof. They can tend to be less cooperative. It's not always that situation, but it does tend to lean that way. So you have to work with them a lot more. That's why you see certain ladies, gentlemen and ladies, they will go ahead and pull the babies and completely bottle raise them. It's by design to create the bond between the farmer and that animal so that they can work with that animal. Um, you're less likely to, down the road to get rid of, I don't say get rid in a bad way, but if you have an animal that's combative, if you have an animal that's destructive, uh, that will not work with you, et cetera, et cetera, you should understand that a lot of times people, for many reasons, will sell butcher, slaughter, give away, get, get rid of that problematic animal. So there is a good example of why bottle feeding is good because listen, I've got a 200 pound registered Nubian buck out there and he is fantastic. Rip has never been aggressive to this day. Doesn't mean it can't happen in the future. I bottle raised him literally from day three. He was already being bottle raised because he was rejected from his mother. Um, and I uh, took him from the farm, my friend, and I bottle raised Rip for, for 12 weeks, loved him like I would a puppy, and now he has given me all these precious goat kids, and on top of that, he is probably, he could be one of the friendliest goats we've ever had, and that's saying a lot for an intact, fully grown Nubian buck. It can make all the difference. Okay, they're hitting on the door. They want their bottle, so let's go. So here's the deal. So two over two weeks ago when we had all of these goat babies, which we knew they would start popping by October 31st, that was the first day, we already prepared ourselves for the fact that we would likely, most likely, just by num sheer numbers alone, probably fall into having a couple of bottle babies. I had old mom, older, mom, not old, but older mamas that have proven themselves over and over. And then I had a couple of new mamas 
which you have no way of knowing or guessing what they're going to do, okay? Whether they will reject the babies, take the babies, have a bad birthing experience. We saw a little bit of everything this time, but I was already prepared for the fact that I would most likely have at least a set of bottle babies. No, no, go ahead, say hi to everybody. Say, I was busted. Yes, you were, you were busted. You're not supposed to be on the countertop. Okay. <laughs> she does not like that. Marie has a mind of her own. She's not supposed to be up here. None of them are, but her, she is a rascal and Lee has not helped. They are rascals together. Baby Lee, he's doing good too. So here's the deal. So you know that we had um, 11 girls that went into labor in, within a five day period. And I have, to this moment, I literally have six babies that I am bottle feeding. Okay. I'm going to have a college son walk in the door here in just a minute and probably interrupt the video too because my cats are going to jump on the counter. I got to feed these goat babies. My husband's calling. Life is happening today. Life is happening. Love me. I love you. Hug me. Is life happening right now? All across the board. Okay, so here's the deal. So I have, what do I have? I have three sets of two <laughs> goat babies. Twins, twins, twins that I am bottle feeding. Now, in theory, I should only be bottle feeding the first set of twins that you would have expected to bottle feed because their mama did, I don't want to say the word reject, but that is about as, that's pretty accurate. I mean, she had them. I think she was traumatized. It was 25 degrees. She wasn't cleaning them. It was pepper. Uh, it was a first, she's a first time mama. She was not a bottle baby by yours truly. So she's a little standoffish and offish, standoffish, uh, a little aloof. And I, I was bracing myself for this type of behavior with her and actually about two more who didn't do it at all. Everybody else did great. Okay. Um, but she just didn't, she's to this, still to this moment, like, I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> I had that moment, I think, a couple of times. Every mother went through that. I'm going through it right now as I'm looking at the dust on my light over here. I mean, you just go, what did I do? <laughs> right? Now, <clears throat> I have two other sets of twins that the mother, Salt, who I is my top milker right now, she had the most beautiful set of twins. That's Pinto and Butterbean. And I actually left the babies with her for two days. They did not latch to her teats because they are so huge. Then I have another mama, um, Coco, who is another same line, family line. These, these girls are all from the same mamas. Her teats are ginormous. I'm trying to get her to be a good milker right now, but it was the same thing. She popped the babies out. She was loving on them. No latching. You cannot let goat babies just float around on the earth and they're not nursing from their mamas. Okay particularly within the first 24 to 48 hours. Guys, they're going to die. Okay, I'm just going to be blunt with you. So, as I've said in previous videos, as I've said over the years, as I'm telling you right now, I am not going to be a person that's going to stand around and go, well, I don't know if they're going to make it or not. She's not latching, and I just leave it alone, and it's 25 degrees outside or whatever, and I come to the house and get a good night's sleep to know that I'm going to go up to the barn the next day and have a dying or dead baby goat. I don't do that. I don't know if you watch people that do that or if somebody in your family has that attitude. That's not my business. I don't agree with it. But if I think I try my best to work with the babies and the mamas, try to ensure that they're dry, that they're safe, um, that they're clean, that they've got good bedding, that they're getting the colostrum in the first 24 hours, it's a step-by-step -step process. So I worked really hard with, um, like I said, Pinto and Butterbean for two days. I would milk their mother. I would get the colostrum, et cetera, et cetera, and give it to the babies to ensure that they were being fed in a timely fashion, but at the same time, trying to get them to latch to their mother. It failed. And she would love on them and lay with them and bathe them and lick them. It was literally, a t it's like a technical problem. Okay. If you've ever had a baby and there's been that situation with human women's, I know women that have had babies and they wanted to breastfeed so 
unbelievably bad. The baby couldn't latch. Maybe they didn't produce enough milk. Maybe their physical, you know what, didn't work with the baby. It happens with humans every single day. So when you see a mama giving her baby a formula bottle, I mean, do you go up to her and ask her 70,000 times why she's not breastfeeding? If you do, shame on you. It's none of your business, okay? It's a very painful thing for a lot of women because a lot of women do want to breastfeed their babies and unfortunately some cannot. So it's the same situation here. We had a rejection and then we had two sets with two, the first, one set of twins and then we have two sets of twins while the mamas were doing great and the mamas are beautiful and I will breed them again um, because they did such a great job. Um, the baby to latch just didn't happen. So I took on the responsibility of ensuring that these babies are going to make it and be fed as often as they need to be and to grow up and to be wonderful, wonderful goats here on our farm, okay? That is why I am bottle feeding six babies. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. The team is getting really impatient out there. <laughs> okay, now in one of my videos last week or so, it's been over a week, I said that I could be bottle feeding eight babies. The reason I said that is because my last mama, one of my older girls, Meriwether, ha finally had her set of twins, Brownie and Snickerdoodle, right? Well, her teats, come on in, her teats are the biggest of all big, all right? And I was really concerned that we were going to be in the same scenario. She had the babies, didn't have any trouble, you know, birthing the babies. She cleaned the babies. She was doing everything. But I'm telling you, her udder and her massive teats, I was like, oh, no, here we go again. Well, same scenario. I was working with her. I was working with the babies. I was making sure they were getting their, at least getting the colostrum in the first 24 hours. You have to do that with ruminant animals. Cows and especially goats, they have to have that colostrum to seal the gut, okay? So even if you're just helping out for the first 24 hours, you have increased their life, uh, their, the possibility of them living tremendously because the colostrum is so very important. Well, here's where I lucked out. In the midst of working with Mary Weather and working with her babies and um, all of the above, they actually did start to nurse on her. Now, they are favoring one particular teat, the smaller of the two. So we're having to work with that and watch that. But see, here's the thing. Mary Weather is not a first-time mama. In fact, this is her third or fourth kidding, if you will. Okay, so she's had lots of babies in the past. So she knew how to call to them. She knew how to work with them. She knew how to, when they were in a, you know, when they were trying to find the teat and the udder and every, the udder, specifically the teat, she would, you know, start to nudge them and lick them. She was a really good guide. The new mamas, not as much. So you're standing there and you're in this really important gap of time of the first 24, 48 hours, right? You got to make a judgment call. Do I leave these babies with the mama or am I going to pull them and save the day? Well, in, in Mary Weather's case, we were a close eye on day two, and basically it just worked out because she is such a solid, proven mama that it worked out. Uh, and so the other two, it didn't. So within that time frame, I chose to pull them because, like I said previously, I want to ensure that they will make it. That is the answer as to why I am bottle feeding six babies. If I had to bottle feed all 16 of the babies, I would do that too, because that is what I feel I'm supposed to do. Come on, come on, Dottie. Come on, Dottie. Yeah, that's it, Dottie. Good job, girl. What are you doing, honey? No, honey. No, honey, you can't have Dottie's ball. But there you go. All right. Woo! Whew. All right, how we doing? Shake your tail feathers. Get that tail feather going, girl. Come on now. All right. So what we have here, and I'll talk more about it in just a second, is our brand new goat stand. Hi, Fritz. Oh, Olive. Um, and you can see it's working out great. Oh, the bottles are nice and warm. Looky there. Oh, my goodness. Booty, booty. So Pinto, Dottie, Dixie, Butterbean, Bucky Boy, 
And looky here, there's Buttons, his sister, right next to him. Good jobs. Fritz, do you need a bottle? Okay, so I'm going to step back in here just for a second while they're finishing up. So, James built me a stand because I was hand bottle feeding these babies, all six, four times a day, okay? I use Dr. Pepper bottles. I don't drink the Dr. Pepper. I mean, we might have had a little bit of it, but I specifically went to the store and I bought the Dr. Pepper bottles. You can use Propel, Diet Dr. Pepper. The only reason I have those is literally because they fit the nipples. So you buy these nipples separate and they, they're made to go on to basically like a Coke bottle, just like you see. So I'm not advocating for you to go drink a bunch of Dr. Pepper unless you want to, whatever it's your business. But I'm saying I bought those and I bought several six packs to have clean for bottles, right? Because we don't buy a lot of that stuff. So I had to have that as part of my preps for being a mama and extra new nipples. And you have to trim the end off right there, okay? So that's why you're seeing the Dr. Pepper uh, bottles in particular. They work really, really well. You just measure out what you think you need to be doing at what phase. Um, at this phase, you're looking at now. Okay, so here's the deal. You start out at a minimum of four up to five feedings a day for the first roughly 10 to 14 days. We have come off of that, and we are now down into the second phase, which is trying to get them into three bigger bottles uh, per day. They are also starting to eat a little bit of hay and grain. All of my babies that are in the barn that are with their mamas, when mama gets fed hay and a little bit of grain, the babies are eating it too. So this is why we have to make sure we're trying to keep everybody consistent as far as, yes, you're, you're nursing one way or another, but you're also being fed, you're growing into the other feed. So we're in the midst of that right now. So I'm doing three bottles and then we have hay and grain, okay? Um, and James just built me this stand. I should, I wish we'd had it last week. <laughs> because it is just so handy dandy. He literally built it out of scrap wood um, and he just kind of threw it together for me. So that's pretty much where we're at. It's working wonderfully. So I just line up the bottles. Now this is day two of working with the stand. So the first time last night, a couple of them were like, what am I supposed to do? Once they latched on and they figured it out, they loved it. But as you know, as we press forward from the first couple of days, they're just gonna run straight to it because they know exactly what's gonna happen. They're gonna get their bellies full. Okay, okay, You somebody spilled a little bit, but that's okay, we're learning. Did you, looky there, uh-huh. Now some of you suggested that maybe we could put like some wood in between. That's certainly something we could do. Um, it's optional, some people have, some people do, you know, whatever you wanna do. The bottles though, however, when they start latching on, honey, they're not gonna let go of that. They're gonna get the full feed. As you can see, everything went just fine right here. But that is something you could work with. We just haven't done it, probably won't because this is working great anyway. How you doing? Did you get your belly full? Oh, I love the way you're, wow. Pinto, this is, this is good. All right, all right. All right, I hope that this answers your questions. I'm sure you will have more. Yes, they are currently living in the house. They have uh, two big tubs. We've split them up and they, they, they are, for right now, they are pretty much living on the back patio. It's been 60 something degrees. Now it's gonna cool down tomorrow and get some rain. So we're gonna have to work with that. But I like to keep them close to the house if I can uh, for right now while I'm bottle feeding. But over the next week or so, we will actually probably put, put them all into their own stall in the barn especially when you get down to two bottles a day. So it's a 12 week process. So you have the four to five feedings for the first two weeks and then you kind of try to bounce it down to about three for several weeks. Then you bounce it to two, then you start feeling normal again. It's just like a newborn baby. And then you'll get down to like the last couple of days will just be one bottle. But I bottle feed my babies to 12 weeks. That is what is recommended. It's best, it really, really is. Some people only do it to eight, each their own, but I have done all of my bottle babies to 12 weeks and I we haven't had a problem. And they've all turned out great and very healthy and very friendly. But you just have to wean it over time. 
right? You have to wean it over time. You can milk your goats or you can also make, I've got my own homemade formula that a lot of people use. It's whole milk, evaporated milk, and buttermilk. I have a whole video on it, okay? So it, in, in other words, if you get in a scenario where you have a goat baby and try your best to at least get the colostrum from the mama, if nothing else, and if she's not a good producer or is not cooperative, you can then make your own formula. You don't have to buy those nasty bags of uh, stuff at the store that's like $45 a bag and is a ripoff. They, it just doesn't do the same good. I don't think, and I've worked with both, as your own homemade whole milk, a uh, little bit of evaporated milk and buttermilk. Some people just use whole milk, but I do find that if you can put in a little bit of that buttermilk, I think that their droppings are um, much better. They tend to not um, have any form of, um, well, I'll just say it, diarrhea. I know that's nasty, but they don't have loose stool. <laughs> you want those little pebbles, you know? So that's part of it. It's just like with anything else. You have to work with what you can do and do what works best for your farm and particularly what works best for the health of those babies, right? And that's what we're doing here at Appalachia's Homestead. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll have more videos coming your way. If you have questions, let me know. I did make goat cheese last night. I hope to make a video in the near future on that. It's delicious and wonderful. Because like I said, I am uh, feeding these babies, but I'm also milking as well. So we're trying to just run it all at, all at the same time. Hope you have a great Thanksgiving week and uh, we just appreciate you being here. I hope I answered your questions. This will be my final call on answering these questions, okay? <laughs> I, mean, I love y'all, but I mean, seriously, if somebody asked you every day, 12 times a day, what is two plus two? What is two plus two? What You might go, I'm just gonna make a video on what's two plus two. So that's what I did. All right, guys, love ya. Like, subscribe, and share. Hope it helped you out. See you on the next video. Godspeed. Have a great day.